The genius of Hitchcock's season was the BFI's contribution to the 2012 festival. Hitchcock made 10 silent movies at the start of his career, of which nine remain. These films were in a state of disrepair, and some of them still don't exist in their entirety. BFI tracked down the missing sections from film archives across the world, and each film was restored frame by frame. New scores were commissioned for the nine films, and I was brought on board by a, by a freelance producer on the project who knew my work well. To my knowledge, BFI hadn't worked with a lighting designer before. They'd commissioned live scores before and had always had problems with music stand lighting, I assume running at full, spilling onto the screen and washing out the image. I also talked about how it would be possible to replicate key light directions of the screen across the orchestra for moments in the film that had strong key light looks and match the lighting intensity shot by shot so that the orchestra and the film really were held by light in the same dynamic space. It wasn't until after we'd agreed to go ahead with the project that BFI's technical director told me that the lighting should be as independent as possible and that we couldn't have a time code link between the film and the console. So how do you match a feature film shot by shot when you can't run off the time code? The answer is, in my experience, by the seat of your pants. The Pleasure Garden was the only film for which, in the end, I plotted a lighting state for every single shot. We had two days in the venue, and Richard Godin and I recorded and named a cue for every shot in the film. Um, it was the shortest film of all of them. It was 70 minutes, I think, and it had 949 different cues. Um, <laughs> all of them were snap cues, of course, and I sat at the back of the venue and operated, dry eyeballed and barely blinking in case I missed a change in shot. Um, the orchestra had tungsten music stands running at something like 55% for working light, but which also gave that generous fill on their faces I was talking about. And we used the Celador Desire D60s in the Lustre Plus colorway for the side and key light. There was no overhead, um, which was partly about avoiding bounce back on the screen and also that just we didn't have rigging positions in Wilton's Music Hall that wouldn't have really affected the image of the screen sitting there in the darkness. I'm so glad that we ended up with those cellar doors. I'd been asking Craig Bennett a white light for LED profiles. I wanted profiles I, so that I could shut her off the screen because the screen is king and the film is king, right? And there weren't any of them available at that time in the higher stock. So I settled for the cellar doors instead because their beam angle was narrow enough and also I didn't have much choice, you know? Like the lanterns that I wanted literally didn't exist in the higher stock of the companies that I was asking. Um, so having settled for them, it turned out I wasn't settling for anything. These units are far and away the best LED units that I've worked with, and I have been going on about them to all lighting designers I know ever since.